Welcome, everybody, to episode number 37 of the Sports Blitz. I'm Doug, and we have Robbie. Robbie, how you doing? Doing well, you know, just living that good old social distancing dream, social distancing <laughs> life. You know, just I, I, I actually have not left my bedroom at all. Like I've actually been, I've actually been in here since the last episode. I actually haven't left. I've just been sitting up here at my computer with my head. Is, is, is somebody is somebody bringing you your meals? <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, oh my they won't goodness! Take, they won't come take my trash. There's just like trash over here. You can't <laughs> see it, but yeah, it's it's not it's not good, man. It's yeah, good. And, I'm, I'm cracking. I'm cracking up. I don't know what day it is. I don't even know what year it is. <laughs> He's cracking <laughs> under the pressure, folks. He's cracking. I'm, I'm crack. I'm cracking. I don't know what month it is, day, year. He's, I'll Our. tell you, these, these, these sport, sports blitz and on the couch and all these kinds of stuff are kind of keeping us sane throughout the school. Yeah, ordeal. yeah. It, otherwise, otherwise, it's just we're just we're just losing it. Yeah, just, we, totally. We gain our sanity back for like an hour to do this, so then we just go right back. To right, right, exactly. We go right back to to, to foaming at the mouth and on the, on the yeah. couch or in the chair. Yeah, so it totally makes sense. But again, I hope everybody is healthy and safe. <laughs> Yeah. Um, uh, and, but what we're going to do today is we're, we're, we're very excited that we're going to talk about, um, the Patriots draft. We're going to talk about that first, and then we're going to go into some Red Sox. Uh, we're going to go into some Sox talk. Uh, we're going to let Robbie take over for some of that stuff. <laughs> um, and it's really, um, you know, we're going to talk about, uh, the report that finally came out after 12,000 <laughs> months of whatever. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and, um, and then we're gonna, um, and then we're gonna, t we're gonna talk a little bit about, uh, maybe some Gronk talk and then I will get our final words in. So that's kind of the, the basis <laughs> of what we're going to do tonight. Uh, right. but first I want to, um, ask you right up front, Robbie, um, without kind of going over who and what and when, number one. What did you think of the draft in itself? Um, did you watch the draft? Did you like the format of the draft? How did it work out? Um, and and then we'll get to you know kind of who they drafted and that kind of. Thing. Yeah, I um, I did watch it. I watched pretty much all of the first round um, last Thursday night. Actually, wow, it's already been a week. Crazy again, time. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you but, just know what time it is. Yeah. <laughs> at least what day it is. Uh, at least I know that one day out of the week, apparently. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, no, I didn't watch the first round. Um, sort of tuned in here and there for the second two days of it. Um, honestly, you know, I liked I liked the format. I mean, I think they did a good job with sort of what they had, so to speak. Um, there didn't really seem to be that many technical glitches with like Goodell or with showing the picks in their homes or things like that. Um, yeah, I think honestly it was, it was not bad. It was not bad. It could have it honestly gone a lot worse in terms of, you know, technology. I know that there was some talk leading into it about how teams were concerned about the virtual draft and things like that. I did get a big kick out of seeing some of the coaches and their and executives in their home offices um, or guest Husky coaches in some cases. Uh, but yeah, I thought that was very, uh, I thought it was really interesting. And, you know, maybe, you know, maybe they could take, you know, I hope that next year they can kind of go back to the, the regular draft format, but who knows? Maybe they can sort of take some of those virtual aspects and apply it going forward. Because it actually, it actually uh, did not go half badly, and I think that's something that the NFL should be should be proud of: uh, the fact that they were able to pull this off with uh, pretty much without a hitch. Yeah, I thought it was interesting. Um, uh, the first time that they practiced, and I think they practiced a couple of days before, they had some technical difficulties with even the first not just the first round but the first pick. yeah so there was some technical difficulties but i guess they um 
they, they got those fixed. And uh, I loved the fact that they, there's a couple of things behind the scenes that I'm not sure people know about unless you were kind of maybe listening to sports radio or listening to ESPN. Um, and one of the things is, is that um, all the first rounders uh, were sent all the team hats because they didn't know necessarily. Yeah. Some yeah. didn't know, obviously, probably the first, at least the first, the first round, first pick knew where he was going. But I'm sure. <laughs> but uh, but other than that, they were sent all all the teams hats so they could once they knew once they got the call, the phone call, they were able to choose the hat. Um, right. That that kind of went with the team, so that was kind of cool that they did that. Um, the other thing is, is that uh, when you watched um, Bill Belichick, one of the pictures that I guess he sent out was the fact that his dog Nike yeah, was, was actually on the seat, and he said, "Well, I wasn't making the picks; it was my dog Nike." <laughs> so, yeah, and his dog was I just saw, there. I saw, it was, I yeah, saw it was that. very cool. If you haven't seen that picture, it's very cool. It's it's really cool picture. You gotta look it up, or um, I, I I assume it's online somewhere because they they had it on the news and they had the picture, so you can probably find it. Uh, but that that just was really cool. Um, I liked it too. I thought it was um, interesting how they uh, were able to put the technology together with um, with things that they had to do. Um, I like the fact that, and everybody thought, oh, this is going to be a nightmare and it's going to be, there's going to be glitches and going to be all kinds of things. It really wasn't any. I didn't see any at all. And it really went very smoothly and, and, and really very well. Um, I, I just thought it was, um, I thought it was really good. Uh, I, I didn't watch all 42 yeah. rounds, but I did which is an exaggeration, obviously. Um, <laughs> I think I watched the first round, um, and then I might have I, I tuned in on radio mostly for the for the other stuff. Um, yeah. Did you watch the first round at all, or I watched I watched pretty much the whole first round, uh, like I said, and uh, then sort of again sort of tuned in here, and there was mainly for the remaining rounds, sort of following along on Twitter. Uh, you know, or ESPN, whatever, ESPN app, whatever. Um, I will say, I will say this is that that draft had far less technical difficulties than this show has had over <laughs> over our episodes recording virtually. So, uh, you know, they're they're actually they're doing a better job than we are at least. Yeah, and and you know what, people have to realize that that those kinds of things are going to happen. Um, there are things that freeze up. I think there's a lot of people that are doing Zoom meetings at night with their family and friends, and I know I have been. So um, I know it's been. <laughs> In it's our been, case, iMovie loses 40 minutes to an hour <laughs> plus of materials. <laughs> yes, um, that, that was not a good night. <laughs> no, 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 it was not a good night. No, it was not a good night. I was really about to throw my computer out a window. So. Yes, exactly. And I was about to throw Robbie out a window. Oh. So <laughs> <laughs> I just spent an hour and 40 minutes and we lost pretty much all of it. Um, so anyway, besides that, we, we, we're good now. We fixed our technical difficulties, which is good. We um, so, <laughs> right, exactly. Well, we just, we just keep going. Uh, no, no, no yeah. matter what, we keep going. Yeah. So, right. um, so what I wanted to do was, is um, I wanted to start talking about some of the picks yeah. and um, what your thoughts are. And uh, I was a little, I don't know. I, I I'm going to just throw it right to you. Um, were you surprised of what happened in the first round with, uh, with our pick? Uh, uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, yes and no. Um, yeah, the, in case you haven't heard or are living under a rock, welcome. You've missed yes. a lot. Yeah, uh, actually, you should probably crawl back under the rock right now because yeah. it's probably not don't, a good time. Don't, 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 don't come out for another six months. You know, just, not a good time to come right out. Go back rock. under. Go back under. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the Patriots, uh, they traded. Their first round pick, um, so they didn't end up picking in the first round. I think I sent out a tweet saying that I literally 
stayed up for or not, or not stayed up but I literally you know had the draft on for two and a half hours for that with the question mark uh so that was kind of interesting um I mean yes and no in terms of being surprised I mean Bill has always had ways of sort of shuffling his picks around in past drafts and stuff like that so with him nothing really surprises me um you know I would have like to see them maybe at least take a chance on a first rounder but at the same time uh especially that late in the first round you know I don't know like I said I was not I I think it what it comes out to I was I was not surprised you know maybe a little bit disappointed but I was definitely not surprised that Bill and uh Nick Casario sort of took took that route when it came to dealing with that, literally dealing that first round pick. <laughs> yeah, I, I was a little surprised, but then again, I wasn't surprised because Bill always just, I don't know. I, I, I don't really know what he does in the draft. All, all I know is that, um, you know, he seems to pick these guys that, um, that may not be, um, you know, first round players. They may not be players uh, that can uh, he picks players from all over the country, all o- every school. It's not just uh, Michigan and Michigan State and the schools and Florida and Florida State. It's not just those schools. He picks um, picks picks guys from all over the place. So I thought that was yeah. kind of. I I I also got the sense he could have picked a quarterback right there, and I got the sense that he has a little bit more trust in Stidham, uh, maybe. Uh, we'll talk about this in, in a little while, but I think he has a little bit more trust in the fact that he, I guess, and, and to say it right out, Robbie, I'm not sure if he liked anybody at that at, at that position. Maybe he liked the, 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 the first couple, the first two or three, first two anyway. But I don't think he really did uh, because he would have picked some. Um, and that's just my that's just my uh, my opinion because there were quarterbacks that were available at that at that time. So my thought is is that um, he just wasn't interested. He didn't think that they had that they had um, value at that position. Um, he likes to pick in the later rounds. Um, I I won't say anything, but there was a quarterback that won some Super Bowls that was not picked in the first round. <laughs> it was a six round pick, actually, I think. Oh, yeah, I think I know I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah, a guy from, a guy from Michigan actually of all schools. Yes, uh, matter of fact, a guy who actually was uh, uh you know behind Drew Bledsoe and then he came out and started Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, Drew Bledsoe got hurt and then for some reason Came in yeah. and started doing really well, and I can't remember his name though. You remember his name? I can't. Tim, Tim, t- Tom, t- Tom. I think Tom, it was Tom. It's Tom, 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 yeah, Tom, Tom. Grady, Grady. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know his last name. Oh, oh no, wait, wait, Brady, Tom Brady. Oh, yeah, oh, I remember yeah. him. Oh yeah. Oh, that guy. Yeah, one. Yeah. You know, one, okay. Just won a couple of Super Bowl rings, six. Um, you know, few. few. So, you know, so they, my 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 whole feeling was, Robbie, <laughs> is that is that Bill just wasn't interested. He wasn't interested in 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 any of the quarterbacks that were available at that time. So I wasn't really surprised. I, I was a little disappointed because right. I wanted to see. You know, I mean, he picked a wide receiver last year. In the first round. So I was a little surprised because there was some wide receivers out there, too. I mean, right. really good ones, too. There was at least two that I know about. Uh, but I, well, well, I really wasn't surprised because when it comes to Bill, you, you're typically not surprised about that kind of thing. Well, I think the, the one that we had talked about last time in our draft preview uh, was gone by the time it got down to the path. And that was Jordan Love, uh, Utah yes. State. He, had, he ended up going to Green Bay, which – uh, I think yeah. surprised a lot of, from what I was reading, they surprised a lot of Packers fans. They were, I think, there was a lot of surprise uh, sort of around football circles of the Packers went with a quarterback. It's kind of, I, I'm sure, I know we'll touch on this maybe at some point 
this evening, but like it sort of ignited some rumors about Aaron Rodgers and you know just how how secure Aaron Rodgers is uh, in the starting position there in Green Bay. But uh, yeah, other than that, I mean, none of the other quarterbacks that you know the Patriots were maybe linked to were first round materials. So I can understand you know why they would stay away from that with that uh, with that first round pick. Yeah, no, I t- I told I totally get that too. Um, and there are some rumors about Aaron Rodgers, but isn't that the isn't that one of the one of the? <laughs> it's it's not a bad place to go, be able to learn how to quarterback because you have Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. You're you're yeah. maybe second or third, um, in line, and you learn from him. I mean, that's that's the best possible situation as far as I'm concerned, but. Yeah, there have been some um, some thought processes to that, um, but um, what we did was we we went to the second round, and we had pick number thirty seven. Yeah. And with pick number thirty seven, we picked a guy I've never heard of. <laughs> <laughs> and a school. And we picked another guy that I haven't heard of. And wait, wait, and a school, a school that I never heard of. So uh, Bill decided Wait, what to take. What school was that? Bill decided to take a safety. Oh. His name is Kyle Doug. Oh yeah. Uh, no relation to me because my name is Doug. <laughs> um, and the school is Lenore Rhine. Oh, I you know I heard about that. that's a D two I believe or it is yeah. It is a D two school. Wow. Yeah, that that's. That was really what I said when I heard about the pick. <laughs> wow. I was like, yeah. what? what? See, see, I try very hard, especially in the last 20 years, not to think about the picks too, too, too much because Bill does not go with the norm. He just doesn't. Sure. He doesn't. You think he's going to do this? He does yeah. something totally opposite he, he picks in the second round when there are so many other guys out there he picks in the second round he picks and at number 37 which isn't a bad pick he picks a guy from a d2 school that nobody's ever heard of yeah. now this guy is supposedly in the d2 at this school really good safety he's a really good player but that doesn't mean it translates to the nfl necessarily but I don't know. I, I just I, – what did you think of the pick? I, I I was dumbfounded. but I, I got to be honest. Like, I mean, I would re- sort of read the, the notification about the picks and stuff like that. I did not – I'm going to be honest, brutally honest here, folks. I did not do my homework nearly as much as Doug did with these picks. I know the one thing I will say about well, – me either. <laughs> yeah. The one thing I will say is apparently Bill, you know, decided that Michigan was going to be his school of the year this year. He picked two guys, I think, in a row from Michigan or two guys from Michigan, something like that. I know he picked at least he picked like a linebacker and somebody else from Michigan. Later yeah, on, that, the, the next pick, the next pick is uh, round two, pick number sixty, and they picked uh, Josh Uche. I, I'm hoping I'm saying his name right. <laughs> Um, outside linebacker from Michigan. Yeah. Yeah, supposed to be supposed to be really good. Um, him, him, I and do Chase, have... him and Chase Winovich will be uh, correct. Uh, will be patrolling that linebacking core this year, I guess. Then. Yes. Two Michigan yeah, I... men. That's very true. Now this next pick is really very very interesting because this guy's supposed to be. Um, this guy is uh, 6'2", 256. His name is Anthony Jennings. He's uh, DL uh, from Alabama. Uh, um, yes, I, yes. I heard, I heard they picked an Alabama guy. Yeah, he started in 38 out of 54 career uh, games with the Crimson Tide. Um, he's projected as kind of like a stand-up edge guy. Um, they think that he's very, very close to, um, and, and I hate to bring this up because I know people hate to bring it up because then and when, once you get 
that name out there that he looks like or he reminds you of? Am I keeping you up there, Robbie? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> dude, dude, turn so, up your screen, man. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, you know, to do that. Like, like, hello, hello. Oh, right, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so. Um, I'm going dark. This, this guy, I know. This, this guy is projected to be like a Kyle Van Noy type of player. Former Patriot Kyle Van Noy. Former by the way. Patriot Kyle Van Noy. But again, a Kyle Van Noy type player. Um, yeah. And. You know that that's what he's projected to be. I don't know. I've got no idea. <laughs> then round three, pick ninety-one. We got uh, Devin Asasi. He's a tight end from UCLA. So we picked two rookie tight ends. What do you think about that? I mean, tight end is that one of the positions that we definitely uh, need some help with the depth in the depth category out. So um, I can't say I'm surprised because. We really don't have any tight ends to begin with, so might as well take some more new, some more no name guys. I mean, I just wanted to right. let you know that tomorrow, you know, once this quarantine ends, I'm going to go down to Foxborough and try out myself to be a tight end for the Patriots because they don't, they don't seem, they look to be, they look to be needing some help in that department. I'd like to actually watch that workout. Actually, <laughs> that would be great. So would I. So would I. Yeah, I'd like to watch tape of myself and just hang my head in shame. So this guy, this uh, Devin guy, this Asasi guy, was a former number three tight end in the country behind Lions Isaac Nauta. Um, so. A former number three. I don't know what that means. He could be number 103 now. <laughs> I don't even know, man. I don't have uh, – I, I, I don't know. I don't have any idea. Uh, so the next, we actually went to Virginia Tech at pick number 101 and picked – Ah, uh, yes, this tight end, yes. Yes. This is Dalton Keene. Yes. Um. And the Patriots traded up with the Jets to select him. Yeah. Uh, they ACC surrendered three guy. picks. Yeah. ACC guy. Yes. Yes. And, and again, you know, we'll just have to see, well, I mean, what happens with these guys. I mean, I, I don't know too much about them. I looked up most of these guys um, and tried to figure out what the next – there, well, there's. I, I will say this. I don't want to jump too far ahead, but there is one. But you're going to. I've, there. Wait, wait, wait. This is a kicker. The kicker. Yeah, yeah. There's one He's graphic next. that I've heard. He's next. Okay. He's I've next. heard of him for all the wrong reasons. I feel like. Right. Right. Um. So. Uh, what, I'm not going to. Do, do Justin, you want to go down this rabbit hole? Do you want to go down this rabbit hole? Sure, why not? People are talking uh, about it. Yeah, yeah. So nah, this yeah, is nah, this is from the Raiders. This is uh, round five pick number one fifty nine. Justin Roundwasa. Uh, from, from Marshall. From Marshall, yeah. Yeah, we are so, Marshall. So so the controversy of this guy is uh. well well the good thing is is from what I'm hearing. Because I've never seen the guy play. I, I just never have seen the guy play. But, I don't think I've ever okay. seen a Marshall football game in my life. Exactly. But, so, yeah. What I'm saying is, is that from what I'm hearing is, is that he, cook, he, he cooks really well. No, he kicks <laughs> really well. <laughs> oh, boy. He may cook. He may cook very well. <laughs> he but. probably does. Who knows? He went to Marshall, so I don't know whether he cooks well. Uh, then again, I don't know where any of these guys cook well. Like a Virginia Tech guy. The... <laughs> now the question is: does Brandon cook? Does Brandon cooks cook well, though? <laughs> yes, because he has it in his name, so he's got to cook well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If he doesn't, that's a problem. Um, I think what it comes down to is is that they say this guy does really well in really really bad weather. That's what I heard. I heard he's a good kicker, but he cooks in he cooks in bad weather. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, oh man, this is going downhill very quickly. Ah, uh, 
Well, what else is true? That this is this is our mo of this show is that we have these moments where we it's, just go down to go off the rails. We this is our okay. So let's talk about let's, cooking kickers. Cooking kickers now? No, okay. cooking. We talk about cooking kickers. <laughs> okay, so so the, the the big outside linebackers they eat kickers for lunch. Is that what you're trying to tell me? Um, I don't know. Okay, so let's talk about this guy, Justin, who has a little bit of a controversy, Robbie. Tell us what that is. Yeah, he uh, apparently has a certain tattoo that is getting a lot of attention because it is apparently somehow associated with a um, group that is very into, uh, how do I put this? Play? I don't want to say it. Neo-Nazism and white supremacy and all that fun stuff, you know, and uh, yeah, uh, I don't know, don't know quite, don't know quite how to, uh, to go, I don't know quite no, how to go that's from a, there. Yeah. No, no, that, that's yeah. exactly what it is, but what he said was is that he's either going to do one of two things, he's going to either get it removed and get it covered up because he was young when he got it. Which make which doesn't make any sense because he actually has it in some pictures before he was that young. Um, so he said he got it when he was I don't know really young, but he's also really young. So how young could he get it? I don't know. I, anyway, he said he was going to cover it up, or or he was going to cover it up, uh, cover it up or get it removed. So either one of those, I don't know what he's going to do with it, but. Um, I I, uh, I don't know. I, I just think that, you know, I don't know if Bill knew about this. Typically, they do uh, a lot of research on these guys before they, I'm not sure if they research what tattoos the guy has on his body, but they do a ton of research. So I don't know really whether, you know, Patriots always have some kind of controversial pick, some kind of controversy with somebody. So, you know, why not have the kicker have, have an issue? So it just doesn't make any sense. But, yeah, that was our, my next one. Um, the next one after that was Michael on We Knew. He's a guard. Uh, I'm just going to go through them right now. Justin Heron was the next one from Wake Forest. He's an outside tackle. Cash spelled C-A-S-S-H. <laughs> Halawula. Halawula. <laughs> Uh, he's a linebacker from Wyoming. Again, I don't know what these guys are. <laughs> I just, I'm, I, I just, I just, I'm just, I'm just loving you trying to pronounce these guys' names. <laughs> it's I'm our new segment. The one saying, Doug though. pronounces the picks. Uh, Doug, I pronounce the picks. Um, <laughs> I can't read that. Can you read this, please? Um, the last one, round seven, pick two hundred and thirty is Justin Woodard, the center from Memphis. Um, this Justin Woodard guy, <laughs> I was reading some stuff on this guy. Um, D21 in the draft class, it was generally off the radar. So he's a perfect Patriot seventh round pick because <laughs> he's off the radar. I don't know what that means, man. Scouts believe Woodard, who started 52 games in college, would have ran the 40-yard dash in 5.10 seconds. Mm. <laughs> he's a center. Yeah, well, this guy's going to fight the ball and block. He's going he's gonna to fight for a, a final roster spot if you ever get yeah. home. I mean, that's, that, that's, that's really what it is. But um, overall – Picks. I mean, I, I know we don't know a lot about them. Um, I, I'm not even sure if we could give it a grade just because I I'm not. Yeah. I, I mean, I think the first, I think the 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 second pick. Uh, I think the the Alabama guy, Amphrey, is a good pick. Yeah. I think the two tight ends. I, I would like to see them out there to see what they can do. Um, Josh um, Uche from outside linebacker <laughs> from Michigan. He's supposed to be really good. Uh, but I'd like to see the tight ends. But all in all, I mean, 
I don't know. What, what, what do you think about at least the first one, two, three, four, five picks, including the kicker? Yeah. Uh, the kicker that cooks. Uh, the kicker that cooks, yeah. Um, I think, you know, I don't think they're that bad of picks. I mean, just from what I'm hearing and, you know, talking to you about it, I mean, I don't think – I think it's very interesting that we drafted a guy from a D2 school in the second round. Uh, but, yeah, I I don't know. I don't think it was – yeah, I don't think it was – I don't think it's that bad. I don't think it's that bad. No, and again, I looked that's up all, That's all guys. I got, folks. Yeah, I'm no, sorry. That's all I got. <laughs> that's all I got. I got it. Oh, go. I did, I, Doug, I did want to ask you, though, really, really quick, just to – get it's draft related but i didn't want to ask you because we had talked about this last episode what were your thoughts on Tua actually being picked number five by the miami dolphins um i think it was i think it was probably real smart excuse me for miami to do that um were you surprised though that he actually yes went in that slide yes i do i yeah. thought he was going to drop down a lot more because yeah. of his injuries yeah. and um that's what i thought although he had a really good um combine uh from what i'm hearing um i'm not sure how much of a combine he, he had his had, own like personal workout that he, he did that, that he filmed and he, he apparently did. looked really good in so that yeah. kind of eased Ease the tension for some teams, it sounds like, or for the yes. Dolphins, at least, it sounds like. Yeah, I, I would still be a little nervous about his injury status. So um, that's yeah, just my though. personal opinion, but that, yeah. that's a great question. Um, I did not think that he would go even that I, low since they were thinking that they were thinking originally that he was going to go number one, but then with his all his injury <laughs> status and stuff like that. He hasn't well, even been Bur- cleared to Joe play, Burrow, as far as I know. I mean, Joe Burrow is just, you know, I mean, I hate to say it, but Joe Burrow is far and above better, I feel like. Oh, yeah, definitely. Two, two, oh, I two totally agree with that. Yeah, yeah I, totally I mean, agree with Joe that. Burrow, to- Joe Burrow deserved to go number one. I mean, Joe, you know, he the way, especially this past year at LSU, I mean, which is incredible. And by the way, how about, and I, I again, don't want to get too much into the overall stuff, but like, Ohio State came out big in this draft, especially in the first round. They because they had the number two and three picks, I believe it was, were both Ohio State kids. And Joe yeah. Burrow used to play at Ohio State. So what a what a yeah. <laughs> what a what a top five it was for the Buckeyes and former Buckeyes. Yeah, I I I, I agree with that too. It's they they uh they definitely uh they got the beginning of the draft there, so that, that totally makes sense. Um, but um, I think overall, I mean, I can't really give him a grade necessarily, but I, no. I'm, I am interested in seeing some of these guys and how they're going to – how Bills will mix them into the – in with the, you know, regular dudes <laughs> in, in <laughs> with the and with the veteran players. And to try to figure out. Yeah, you, you got a little bug action. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was trying to, I was trying to get you off the screen. No, just kidding. Yeah. You're trying um, to get me to stop. He says you to get, you to get to take some, take some focus off of your cooking kickers guy. My cooking kickers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, I don't know about that. I really don't. But anyway, um, <laughs> I just wanted to touch on something really quickly is uh we did sign we did sign i think it was seven or eight free agents eight eight veteran free agents i just want to say their names because i don't want to necessarily go through them but as things get just closer see if you can to, pronounce them no i can pronounce these guys <laughs> these are easy because <laughs> the draft picks that were hard um the Patriots signed dl bo allen he's actually from tampa we don't know anybody that went to Tampa recently. Do we? Well, no, nah, d- doesn't ring a bell. Okay. Doesn't ring a bell. So we we no, not at all. Uh, we also got wide receiver Demir Bird, uh, not Larry Bird. 
<laughs> no, no relation to Larry. Actually, Demir is walking through that door. Larry Demir. is not walking through that door. <laughs> Actually, uh, Demir Bird's name is B Y R D, not B I R D. Oh, so it's a little oh, well. different. Uh, we got uh, linebacker Brandon Copeland. That should be interesting because I, 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 oh yeah, that should be interesting. D me Cody Davis. We know about Brian Hoyer, um, and we got. Uh, Marquise Lee just recently a wide receiver and yes. defensive back Adrian Phillips and fullback Dan Vitale announced by Tally. So that was, those were the free agent signings. So yeah. oh, I thought the funny, the, funny, the funny thing is for a second though, I thought you were going to be talking about I thought you were talking about the uh the undrafted free agents. So I'm like, wait, Brian Hoyer was not an undrafted free agent. So that, no, that the I two and and interestingly took me a enough, to pick up where you were going there. But okay. interestingly enough, the two we we did pick up two quarterbacks, UD FA yeah. quarterbacks. Which, by the way, why? I don't know. I don't have any idea, Robbie. I don't know what he's doing. Uh, the first is Louisiana Tech's Jamar Smith. And the second is, hey, Michigan State's Brian Lewerke. Hey. So I don't know where they fall. What do you think? The, I mean, I don't understand. You're going to have you know, five four. Four, four, oh, four. four, four. And they, yeah, four, I guess. Yeah, five if they bring in another veteran guy that's been talked about. But, yeah, the uh, yeah. they got one first quarter. Today. Yeah, as of as of today, they uh, Andy Dalton was uh, let go by the Bengals. So there's yes. been talk that the Jaguars. I think the Jaguars are going to pick him up. I don't think Bill's going to pick him up. Then he'll have five. I mean, what's he going to do? Know, he's yeah. he's got five to take over for one Brady. <laughs> we were just talking about that earlier. I, I don't understand how that's going to. Like I told anyway, you earlier, one for each quarter, one, one for, for each quarter, one for <laughs> overtime. Okay, so who do we save for overtime? And who starts? Uh, Hoyer, Hoyer. We got to save Hoyer. <laughs> Hoyer, Hoyer. <laughs> Hoyer. Got to save Hoyer from Wait, is, What is that? <laughs> is that his name, Hoyer, Hoyer? No, I just <laughs> Got to say Hoyer his name twice. twice. He's twice Apparently, as nice. Uh, you know, you got to save Hoyer for overtime. And, uh, Who starts? Some... I mean, I think you have to start. Don't... I still think Stidham's going to start. I think Dodds will be the second quarter guy. Then you'll have this Louisiana oh. Tech kid at three, Michigan State four, and then if you make it to overtime, <laughs> go with four. If you make it to overtime. <laughs> dude, dude, we're not going to make it to overtime. We're not going to win any games. <laughs> what are you talking about making it to overtime? I, you know, yeah, I, I'm, I'm we'll trying be to lucky. be optimistic. I'm trying to be optimistic here, <laughs> but... Well, we got to figure we're at least going to beat Miami once, you know, maybe twice. <laughs> I don't even know if we can do that, dude. I really don't. Yeah, I, I have I, no I, idea. I, I have no clue. I have no clue. So as we get closer, and, and I'll tell you right out front, as we get closer, we will we will start investigating and seeing where, 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 where kind of he's going, what he's doing. Final cuts, that kind of thing. We don't know yeah. what's going to happen with uh, training camp or anything like that right now. So we're kind of in a bubble um, under a rock. <laughs> uh, in a bubble under a rock, under the dirt, uh, waiting to come back up. So um, well, we really we'll, don't we'll, want to right now. We'll get into – yeah, we'll, we'll, there's a lot of talk about what they're going to try to do and stuff like that, and I'm not listening to anything until we start – you know, kind of opening up here in Massachusetts anyway. So, you yeah. so know, it, it's, it's going to be a little bit of a long road, but we'll, we'll, you know, Robbie and I will keep talking about it. If there's other news out there that we'll keep doing it. Um, uh, definitely. I think right now, I think we should kind of change over a little bit to another sport that is, um, oh, not playing either. Um, and <laughs> that should be playing now. Take your pick. Take your pick of all of them. And uh, we're going to go to the Boston Red Sox. A, uh, right. a report uh, came out just recently about their – Finally. 
wait, 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 finally. Finally, finally. It's probably it's I feel like there. we've been waiting like six months to, I think you know, we have. for the freaking report. Yeah, and so the report came out. I will, I will tell you up front, I heard about it. I did not read the report. I was uh, very uh, disinterested in the report um, just because I really didn't think, and if you listen to Lou Merloni, he says the same thing. Um, he did not think it was a tremendously big deal because guys do it all the time, uh, I guess. Uh, in, in the sport, that they take video and then they take video of guys and they uh, try to learn how they do stuff. And, and they've also learned from themselves too by taking the video. Uh, so there is a video guy and, and that kind of thing to, to do that. But Robbie, what, what is, I know you read the report. What, what, what are your first impressions or what, what, you know, just your first impressions about the report itself? I mean, I think honestly, it was sort of bordering on the best case scenario for the team. I mean, I think it could have gone a lot worse. Um, I think it's tough because like a Red Sox fan, I think the way you look at it, and just the situation in general has a lot to do with where your allegiances lie. I mean, if you're a Red Sox fan, you think this is the best news and that uh, I did not read all 400 pages of the report, by the way. Um, <laughs> I don't even know how long it was. Yeah. Uh, no, but uh, I think depending on which team, depending on which team you're a fan of, I think really – impacts how you view just the situation in general i feel like if you're a red sox fan you know you feel like this totally exonerates the team because just to sort of give people a brief basically in less smallest possible terms what happened or what the reporter found and what the what punishments were imposed basically the red sox lost a second round pick um, in the draft, and then uh, one of their video guys who basically took the fall completely in terms of the Red Sox uh, part of this whole, you know, cheating video scandal. He was suspended for a whole year. Cora was not actually punished for um, any wrongdoing with the Red Sox. He was only suspended for the year for what happened with the Astros. So I think that was a bit of a surprise. I think people, even Red Sox fans, they've expected Core to get, excuse me, get something more. Uh, but at the same time, that was it in terms of punishment. I mean, no players, no coaches, not even really the core, if you really look at it, uh, were punished. So, I mean, like I said, as a Red Sox fan, you can look at it as like, wow, like basically the team was almost exonerated. If you're a non-Red Sox fan, you're probably even without the report, you know, basically saying, you know, oh, the Red Sox are cheaters. Uh, you know, it, I think, like I said, it really depends on your fan allegiances, how you view that whole situation. Um, I, I'm glad in a sense that the report's out there and we can kind of move past having a hang over our heads or move on to whenever there is baseball. Um, I know that uh, basically immediately after the report came out, Ron Renneke's interim tag was removed by the Sox. Now it's interesting. Can intro I ask a question? Yeah. <laughs> did, did did it hurt to remove the tag? <laughs> you know, where was it? Like his hat, a hat, 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 jersey. You know, was somewhere. it was his hat? He turned around his hat to like what I am doing right now. See, it turned around. Yeah. It was backwards Something. and stuff. Or, but uh, uh, yeah. yeah, no, he had his interim tag uh, taken off or removed. <laughs> uh, the end. Uh, the interesting thing is, and again, this is sort of. The report has sort of spurned some some speculation. I don't know how much I buy into it that with Renneke's contract with the team being up after the season, that there might be a chance that uh, and yeah. Cora, there's, Cora could come back after his suspension is over in 2021. Personally, I don't think that's going to happen. I think that kind of that era is uh, is over with and done with. But um, that, that that has been 
thrown out by certain people out there. Uh, but, uh, you know, again, right now, you know, who knows if baseball is going to be played or when it's going to be played or whatnot. So I think, you know, the one, the one not good thing about the report, but the one thing about the report is it kind of did give some – did give people something baseball related to talk about since there is no season going on right now. So, um, like I said, it, you know, it definitely could have been worse for the team in terms of punishments and findings, but at the same time, you know, you never like to see any sort of rule breaking and stuff like that going on. And, you know, you hope that the team learned their lesson and will, uh, will be on the up and up from here on out. So I think that was a, a full report there, Robbie. Yeah. No, I just yeah. I, I just I uh, told I, you I was gonna make up for my lack of insight under the draft when knowledge I came to on the, the draft there. That was good. That was good. You all burping and that. yawning aside. All burping and yawning aside. So. I'm not supposed to read that, man. I mean read it but not read it out loud. I was um, making fun of myself. I don't know what you're talking oh, about. I was making okay. fun of myself. I don't know. If you can't laugh anybody. at yourself, Doug. You know, Mr. Cooking Kickers, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the other one was that Cooking Kickers, not me. Oh, let's go back and play the tape, my friend. Uh, we will. People will write. Cooks. People <laughs> will kicker, write. The kicker, the kicker is not a cook. <laughs> kicker's Maybe not a cook. I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe he could be. I don't know. Cooking kickers, you call me Mr. Cooks. Anyway, so uh, besides that, uh, <laughs> no, I think I think it was. Um, I I I think we, I think we got a slap on the wrist. I really do, and and I'm glad we did. I'm glad this wasn't something that yeah. was huge. I'm glad it happened now, because I think, that it kind of. What's happening now is kind of diffusing a lot of the news, a lot of the sports news, although people are craving sports. So what's happening now is, is that the news cycle goes, oh, Red Sox, the report came out. They talked about it for two days, and now it's gone. Yeah. Huh. It's over. Yeah. Now, yeah. if we were in the midst of the Red Sox season and this virus wasn't going on, the corona thing wasn't going on, we'd be talking about this for a long time. We're not. We're not. It, it was almost, and I hate to say it, it's, 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 a, it's a good time to have it come out. But because you could talk about it for a couple of days or whatever, and then it disappears. I mean, you don't really talk about it anymore because you're talking about, you know, other things. So especially what's going on in the world and trying to get all the, all the sports teams up and running. So, um, no, I just think it's uh, – I th I think it's a uh, you know again I didn't read the report Robbie is I I heard all of the things that Robbie said um yeah I, I guess didn't the, read the, the full report either I don't even I know how long it is I was just either. joking I was just joking about the fact that it was 400 pages I, I don't even know how long it was um all all I know is that I think they um you know I, I think they got off with. A slap on the it's wrist. Kind you're of right. a slap on the you're, wrist. You're right. You're right. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, it was a slap on the wrist. And like I said, you know, you sort of take it depending on where your allegiances lie. And even as a Red Sox fan, I understand that people are going to look at us from the outside and say, you know, oh, they got off easy, blah, 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 blah. I mean, I think, you know, it's kind of like the Patriot, you know, Patriots in certain situations they've had. People are going to judge us regardless of what any reports us. People are going to judge us based on their own. Right. Yeah, their own allegiances. I get that. I mean, it's just sort of the, you know, just sort of the way things are in sports. So I probably would do the same thing, you know, if right. I were, you know, I mean, I look at, I would probably look at if the, if a similar team had a situation, I'd probably look at and say, oh, they, you know, they, they got lucky or whatever you want to call it. So I get that. And uh, it's just something the Red Sox are going to have to move past, move past. And, uh, you know, now hopefully they can sort of focus focus ahead rather than, you know, with this not hanging over their head, at least in terms of, you know, what the report and any punishment come, you know, already having come out. I don't so. think anybody's going to really talk about it because by the time we get <clears throat> baseball underway, it's going to be way, way, way in the back there. 
I mean, I don't yeah. think it, people might talk about it for a minute or two, but they won't talk about it for a long time because they want to get baseball out of the way and talk about the, the team and stuff like that. I think this reminds me of the flake game because what happened to the flake game? The guy who was the person who, you know, took the balls and was deflating them, you know, the ball boy basically was the one who got fired and that was pretty much it. Yeah, they got, you know, they, they were – um, really, you know, really, really, you're, you're really, you're really, you're really, you're going to say that that was pretty much, I think you're missing out a big key punishment that came out of that, my friend. <laughs> well, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm certainly not saying that, that it was, not. I think you're missing I, I, a I key. Wasn't, but, no, but I wasn't saying there wasn't a punishment. What I'm saying is, is that there was a fall guy. It was a fall guy for both of these kinds of yeah, things. But the fall guy, yeah, talking. but the fall guy in this case. You know, you, you, in this case, you're right. You know, the, the video guy was kind of a fall guy. In the other case, the fall guy didn't didn't change the fact that our starting quarterback got suspended for four games. Now, obviously, if he hadn't broken the cell phone, would things have been different? You could make the argument either way. But I, you know, I just, you know, I think I understand where you're going with the comparison. But yeah, you know, I think in this case, the Red Sox got off far more easier in terms of punishment and all that than the Patriots did for Deflake. I mean, people still bring up Deflake, you know, year in, year out. It's basically like a Patriot signature now. The only reason they bring up Deflake Gate was because of that punishment, because of the fact that Brady got four games. That's the only reason they bring it up. They don't bring See, it up for know, any other reason. I don't know. Like, you know, after Spygate, I don't know, Do you, I don't know if they – I feel like Robbie, Brady what was the guy's name? What was the guy's name that got fired? Yastrzemski. Or what was his, whatever. What was his first name? Mike, I think. Are you sure? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know either. I don't even know the guy's is the guy's name Myers, the guy who got fired for the for the Red Sox name? Is it Myers? I don't even know who the guy's I, name is. Uh, yeah. The only uh, reason you remember that is because Tom Brady got four games. Okay? But, no, but we, also, like- we also fired Cora for this. And Cora True. had nothing. Cora was going to be off anyway. He was suspended for a year. But still, we they fired him. They fired but the coach point, that brought us to the to, to the World Series. So I they got they got their, you know. But, they got right. but, stuff too. but my point, but my point is, is that I people even if Brady had not been suspended, I think there would have been a lot of people going forward that still would have brought up when talking about the Patriots would have brought up. The flake gate because you know basically the Patriots after especially after Spygate were sort of dubbed as this you know team that you know the yeah, team the, that the, has the, gates. Che- the cheating the cheater yeah the cheaters basically the heinous because they heinous whatever you want to call it but I feel like with this Red Sox that like, you're right like people basically you know nothing more has come of it. Since, you know, and again, it's two different time periods. You know, there wasn't a global pandemic going around during, during a deflate gate. But at the same time, I think that even without the Brady suspension, I think deflate gate would still be a topic of conversation, you know, now, what was it, you know, five years, five years later. Whereas I don't know if you would say, you know, I don't know if five years from now, if we'll even really, if people will be bringing out the Red Sox you know, the Red Sox scandal. They might. They very well might. But I, I just think in that regard, you know, there, there's a little bit of difference there. I get your overall point. I mean, but I think, you know, and, you know, so I think, I think, you know, I just think that, uh, you know, I think what it comes back down to is that, you know, the Red Sox did get off easy. They got a slap on the rest, and we should sort of take it and, and move on definitely, and uh, hope hope that our teams could stop putting themselves in these uh, these muddy water situations. Because I'm getting kind of tired of having to defend and stress out about if our favorite teams are going to be punished or not over every little thing. No, I mean that of course makes sense, and and I understand where you're coming from. Um, and yeah, it would be nice for us to do, but the you know the Astros. The Astros, I mean. Oh, the Astros, the Astros, people are. It wasn't just us. Yeah. 
It the wasn't Astros just actually, that. And the Astros had basically everybody under the sun suspended. You know, their manager, GM, Cora. I mean, they got the book thrown at them for what happened. Red Sox, right. Red Sox, they got got probation. It's like you got to look at like terms of like a criminal sentence. The, the Astros got five years in prison where the Red Sox got probation, like six months probation. And from what <laughs> I hear, because I listened to I listened to Lou Lou Merloni in the afternoon, um, and so uh, you know, I listened to him. And again, he was on the Red Sox. He's been in baseball for for you know quite a long time. And from what he says, he says that this was uh, this was a slap on the wrist. But and he's glad that that's what it was. But the fact is, is that he knows <laughs> he knows that every team videos. So it's just a matter of figuring out how you can video safely without without having that cheating thing going on. So that's that's really what it comes down to. But I'm glad they that's that's what they got. I think when they start baseball, I don't it may come up a little bit, but I don't think it's going to be this big yeah. huge thing now. Right. Um, I think they just want to get baseball underway and start getting these games going. So get um, sports underway, do yeah, something exactly, exactly. So, you know, that's, that's just what it is. Um, the next thing, our next topic is going to be Rob Gronkowski. Uh, yes. Yes. So, why, why don't you tell everybody what you know about Gronk in the last 24 to 48 hours? What was, was, he, was he over your house and did you get invited to his house at all? Or? Uh, no, I have not. It's not. I think it's lost in the mail somewhere. My the, the sports um, blitz can't. Uh, I I want to see if we can get him on. Should be able to get him. That on. would that be that would, that would be something. We'll, we'll start a Twitter campaign. Get the awesome. sports book. That would be <laughs> um, awesome. No, so obviously, if it, if you have not heard and have been living under a rock, you got to please crawl back underneath. You really don't need to be out here right now. <laughs> don't come out. <laughs> You're not, not a welcome. good time to come out. Not oh, a good you're time. Welcome, uh, but you're welcome, welcome, but yeah, I guess it's a good point. Yeah, you're welcome, but not a good time to go. Yeah, out. yeah. For your, own, for your own safety, just go back underneath you're the rock. Better off um, under the rock and under the dirt right now. Yeah. But uh, Rob Gronkowski. In the dirt, uh, <laughs> on the dirt, yeah. No, no, <laughs> in the dirt. I, I didn't mean What did, what did you dirt. say? Oh, under I the dirt. I said under the dirt is a reference to something totally different. So. <laughs> <laughs> we're not we're not uh, we're not we're not condoning people going into the dirt or crawling on the rocks I mean, it's just yeah. it's a joke people. it's a joke but i say i should have said in the dirt not, uh, not <laughs> under the dirt anyway right, gronkowski uh, anyway yeah rob gronkowski uh has come out of retirement uh and in doing really? so uh, uh, he is doing so was traded from the Patriots to uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, where he will be reuniting with his bestie, uh, Tom Brady. <laughs> They're Tampa, Tampa Bay, if you listen to Brady. Uh, yeah, so Brady and Gronk back together in Tampa. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't that know. Sucks. You, you, you start. Yeah, you start. I, I got not much more to say than that. that, that it no, happened. I have a little bit it more did to happen. say. Yeah. It, it, it wasn't necessarily a surprise, but I, I'm trying to figure out whether this was done a long time ago versus when it was, if it was done recently. Um, you know, I think that this was the plan all along. I think, I think Bill was – probably the smartest in this whole thing was to try to get something for it. Um, so I think, I think he certainly did the right thing. And it, but do you it think is, he got enough weird. though? I mean, a, a, what was it? A fourth and a seventh for him? No, no, no. They gave up a seventh along with Gronk, I believe, and got back a fourth. Now, obviously, I think, again, Gronk's been away for a year. He's been so, away, and he's, I mean, and he's also got he's, he's also he's got, got the he's injury, injury bag. Yeah, the injury bag. Is so yeah, getting so a think, fourth. Now, if it was like a year or two ago, maybe you could have gotten you know uh, something a little bit higher. But I think right now, a fourth was kind of in the range of what you were going to get for him. Yeah, but I also think Bill doesn't like that. Bill didn't like he would have 
picked in the first round if you like the first round. Yeah, picks. Bill went so trade around the we trying to trade away. He likes the, first the later round rounds. Picks. Yeah, he likes the later rounds anyway. So fourth round pick for him was perfect. Well, I don't yeah. I, I don't see a problem with it. Um I'm just you know, I'm I'm personally gonna be rooting for the Tampa Bay Bears. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm glad, I mean, I'm glad they're not behind in our... the Patriots, the Bucks are now my second favorite team. That's right. Well, it was an overnight. Yeah. I so. just I just wanna see what they're gonna do with all I mean, they, they have a pretty talented team. I just wanna yeah. see how they're gonna spread that around. True. Just, just saying. Oh, I'm just saying. Also, how is Brady going to perform? I mean, the guy, we, right. as we talked about in the last episode, the guy is, you know, not, not getting any younger. And, I mean, given the way he performed last year, I mean, yes, you can make the argument a lot of that had to do with the issues at the receiving court. But I think part of it, as much as I hate to say it, was Brady kind of – the years are starting to catch up to him. So, yep. you know, does he have one more, you know – amazing year where he kind of like lets sets the league on fire so to speak or is he kind of still in that inconsistent sort of you know kind of like he was last year um you know i think it's going to be very interesting to see how that goes but i mean he definitely has a lot he definitely has a better arsenal this year uh coming up uh you know, as opposed to what he had in New England. So, um, I, I'm very excited. I mean, I'm excited. I am excited to see, you know, how he does in Tampa, if he can kind of take the Bucks out of me- mediocrity and into, into the promised land. So, see, where, by the way, the Super Bowl this year, again, I mentioned before, is being held in Tampa. So, how it would be kind of funny if, uh, if you know, the Bucks end up in the Super Bowl in their own backyard. Yeah, it's just a perfect scenario as far as I'm concerned. I mean, that's just my thoughts on that. I just, I, I'm, I, I'm excited to see. Unbelievably, I think, and and I guess this is going to be going out on lots of different kinds of things. But um, I'm actually more excited about seeing the Bucks than I am about the Patriots. Um, I am a huge Patriots fan, but say, I am I, actually I hate more to say, but I excited. Agree with you. Yep, I am. I so am. So, um, you know, it, it, it is what it is. There is this thing that came out the last 24 hours that says that, um, I guess he was joking, Gronk was joking with a reporter that said he's had the playbook for four weeks or something <laughs> like that. Um, and by the way, that's like tampering. You're not allowed to, unless you're signed by a team, you're not supposed to have he, a he, playbook. But he did say he was joking. He was joking. That. Yeah, he, he was joking about it, and that's fine. And, you know, I believe him. I it's mean, Gronk. I mean, it's Gronk. I it's mean, Gronk. It's Gronk. He was, he was have messing to take with what he said. Yeah. He was you messing kinda, with You have to take what he says with a grain of salt sometimes. You know, yeah, he, he was messing with her, and she did not understand the Gronk way. <laughs> so, obviously, that was not uh, – not something that she uh, she was expecting at all, but uh, she made it a news thing because it's you know it, it was this big deal, so, and I don't yeah. think it was. So uh, anyway, um, want to get to our final words uh, because uh, I think we talked a lot about a lot of subjects tonight, and uh, and um, Robbie, what's your uh, what's your final thought or final word for tonight? Um, yeah, I was, I was beginning, I was wondering if you would realize that was final thoughts as opposed to final words, but uh, hey, if you want to change the segment title, go right ahead. You're the, you're the host. Final thoughts, the final words, same thing. It's a matter of semantics. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's just been, it's just, just been I'm sorry. I, 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 I didn't know you had a trademark on final thoughts. <laughs> No, so. but I, but but Tom Brady does now on top of Brady apparently. Um, but anyway, no, I'm I'm just, I'm just kidding with you. But uh, speaking of Tom Brady, final <laughs> thoughts, <laughs> thoughts, <laughs> final <laughs> thoughts. By the way, we have a chat going on. And people are probably wondering what are they talking about. Well, why, why uh, we, have, we, about, have, we have we have a yeah. chat going on. So go tell them what we do. With the chat. we just chat. We just chat about different stuff. I don't know what you're talking about, but okay. Uh, oh, you don't have to tell anyway. our secrets. <laughs> no, we, we just chat about stuff. We're, we're in the chat. That's all. That's yeah, all. Like yeah. anybody else that's all on. Right. Talk all right. 
True. So, um, <laughs> I call Robbie but, ugly, and he calls me, you know, other names. So it's one of those things. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, totally no. kidding. Um, so, final but, thoughts for the evening. Are you, are you gonna be good to them or no? <laughs> All right. Sorry, everybody. Bye. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go crawl under my rock. I'll be back. <laughs> we'll All see right. Ya. Uh, yeah, we'll see you. Episode 38. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway. Man. <laughs> but no, in all seriousness, uh, my final thought actually has to do with Tom Brady. Uh, and of course. A couple of news, the couple of news items that have come out uh, about Brady kind of landing himself somewhat in hot water since he's been in Tampa Bay. And oh, that is, oh, right, I know uh, what you're talking about. Yeah, so first off, apparently Brady was spotted or cited according to the mayor of Tampa, not cited in terms of like the legal cited but you know, actually physically cited uh, in a Tampa Bay park when the <gasps> park was closed, working out. So they kind of had to shoo him out of the park. I know, yeah, I know. Bad boy. You know, bad, bad, bad Tom. And the other one was apparently he meant to go. Yeah. Technical files. Right. Uh, yeah, two-minute penalty uh, in the box. Two minutes. Bob uh, Brady. <laughs> yeah. Um, Get in the box. Oh, but sorry. yeah, Once exactly. More. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, but then apparently he also he went to go visit or pick something up from his new offensive quarter, Byron Leftwich, who by the way is a former NFL quarterback himself with the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars. I know uh, what a dud that guy was. Speaking of Marshall, by the way, Byron Leftwich went to Marshall. Went to Marshall. <laughs> Uh, speaking Thank earlier, you. Marshall. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, we're losing it here. Uh, lost it. <laughs> yeah. we, lost losing, it. We, lost, lost. we lost it a while. We lost it a while. <laughs> lost it about no, uh, nine o'clock or so. I yeah. Think. Yeah. Um, but anyway, probably Rock does managed, that to you. Managed to wander into someone else's house so uh, again dead. kind of instead so kind of got some hot water there with the whole stay home order in the state of florida and things like that yeah but so, the thing that robbie the thing about the walking into somebody else's house is that the guy who owns the house didn't realize that it was tom brady and asked yeah. him and asked him uh like can i help you he had no idea that it was tom brady are you he, he yeah. really didn't know or he's just saying that he didn't know because there's no way know. people doesn't don't, don't know what Tom Brady looks like. come on especially especially in that especially in that area right now and by the um, way the mayor of Boston said that if Tom Brady was in a park that he would not he would be, not have kicked him out of the park would not have kicked him out of the park good old Marty <laughs> um yeah so uh, yeah, Tom Brady just uh, making making some headlines for himself down there. And again, he's now referring to as Tampa Brady, which I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, yeah, Tom definitely. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. Tom, you know, definitely, um, you know, going for it now that he's out of New England and now living down south and. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, no punishment per se is going to come from any of those antics. But I just thought it was interesting how uh, the mayor of Tip actually had to um, clarify that he was cited as in like seen in the park, as opposed to cited in terms of fined for being in the park, because there was some there was some speculation that he'd actually been fined for those actions. But based on no, what he was said, kicked out of the you, park, but not fined. Right. Right, that's but the the mayor had to clarify because the mayor cited can go either way uh, in legal and thank, political thanks. circles. Thank you for that clarification, <laughs> Robbie Robbie Johnson Esquire. But Robbie here, Johnson uh, Esquire of, LLC. <laughs> yeah, thank you very uh, much. PhD. <laughs> 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 um, 
anyway, so we are yeah, definitely uh, off the rails right now, dude. <laughs> we are. We're on the complete <laughs> opposite side of the track with another train coming right at us. Uh, Thankfully, we're under rocks. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, not, uh, not, not in the dirt, but in the dirt. In the dirt, in the dirt, right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, so that's that's my final word thought of this night. <laughs> um, <laughs> Doug, why don't you go on with yours? <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be able to. <laughs> At this point, wow, holy moly, wow. <laughs> It's, it's definitely off the rails, dude. Wow. This is okay. difficult, though. Again, this, this is our MO right now. Yes. Yeah. Well, this has been our MO for a while, but typically yeah. we can get through the final thought word without <laughs> having a problem. This is like a final thing, and it should be easy to get through, but it's just not. Um, I really don't know why. So my final thought <laughs> is actually – Baseball related. Oh, I can't believe it. So there you go, Robbie. So 47 year old, almost 48 year old Manny oh, Ramirez yes. yep. Yep. has decided I that he wants those. to go and play in Taiwan. Yeah, I heard about those. Why, dude? Why? Why? You're 48. You're going to be 48 in May. He's going to go and play baseball in Taiwan. And by the way, Taiwan is actually playing baseball right now. Yeah. Yeah. They actually and apparently, uh, apparently South Korea is going to be starting up uh, at the beginning of next month, which starts. <laughs> so, so if you want to, if you want to watch uh, the. Uh, hey, hey, you ESPN. Watch, you want to. ESPN watch. apparently is actually. In negotiations to broadcast South Korean baseball here in the States. So. I am so very excited about this. <laughs> I just want live sports. I mean, I literally, I've literally watched live streams of people playing sports video games because it's the closest I can get to live sports right now. It's that, it's that sad. I'm literally considering watching NASCAR racing that's supposedly coming back May 17th so I can actually get some live sports back something. in my life. Cause, Just something. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. But that's my final thought. I don't know why he's doing it. I guess he just loves baseball and he thinks he can still play. Um, I have no clue. Anyway, he's gonna have to I, get well, back on. He's gonna have to get back uh, on the juice. I mean, in the batting cage. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so. Absolutely. But I think um, it's also important to continue to um, give thanks to our, you know, first responders, our online people at the hospitals. I know that they're dealing with a lot of things, um, uh, a, a lot of things that people don't normally see. Um, and, uh, you know, we just thank you for being there. I thank, thank the people who are at the Shaw's and the Target and the, yeah. the grocery stores. They're, they're not dealing with people who are sick, but they're open all the time and, and hours and hours and hours that they're trying to do to keep the stores open so we can get supplies and, uh, and food and that kind of thing. So we also, I was in Shaw's today. Um, and I was, thank, in, I was the in, cashier. I went grocery shopping today as well. I'm thanking everybody and all that. Yeah, so I yeah, was thanking everybody no. too. So it's really important. Wear your masks, people. Also, if you go into grocery stores, wear your masks. Thank you. Uh, that's uh, Mayor Robbie Johnson. Doctor, <laughs> Doctor uh, <laughs> Robbie, Doctor Dr. Rob Johnson, Mayor Governor Esquire. Robbie Johnson. <laughs> Esquire. <laughs> oh man. Uh, it's really off the rails. So anyway, yeah. um, thank you very much for, for joining us. Um, please, you know, send us, don't send us hate mail because we, we cry. We don't like it. Uh, but, um, you know, watch us, watch us, watch us on. I think we're going to put it on YouTube and we'll go, what, what else are we put it on, Robbie? Facebook? YouTube, Facebook, Facebook uh, SoundCloud, it'll be up very soon and, uh, yeah so so know. give us some give us some show ideas too because we don't necessarily have to talk sports 
uh, just because there's not a lot of sports going on. So if you want us to, to do something or, or, you know, just. We can talk cooking. Up. We can talk cooking. No, I, I don't. We need Brandon Cooks for that. But we'll have to get him on the show. That's a good idea. Anyway. We can talk cooking while burping and yawning. We just, we just, we just, we can't get out of our own way right now. <laughs> no, so, no, no. so, so, so anyway, um, this is the Sports Blitz, uh, yes. episode number 37, 8, 9, 37, 37. Number 37. Uh, thank you very much for listening to us or watching us. Uh, be yeah. safe and healthy out there. I'm Doug. That's Robbie. We are out. Stay safe. See everybody.